Hey, Brad, welcome to the show. As a way of getting started, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, Brian. Um, I work at, uh, I'm based out of Chicago. Uh, I work for a company called Commerce Tools. Um, and I run sales uh, for uh, Commerce Tools in North America. Um, we are a, a commerce platform. Um, it's a, uh, it's more of an enterprise, you know, API based platform. Uh, so we have customers like, you know, AT&T, Alta, you know, some Volkswagen, some very large, you know, uh, uh, commerce companies, you know, with uh, everything that's going on, you know, commerce is obviously, you know, becoming more and more important. But uh, I started here about four years ago uh, as one of the second or third employees here in the U.S. Um, primarily, you know, a, a sales team of one, you know, uh, <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, uh, and then kind of growing it from there. Um, so that's where I, you know, that's where I'm currently right now. And we have a team now about, you know, five or six sales reps, um, along with two or three partner folks and about four SEs. What, what was that first year like? A little scary? Uh, well, I left Salesforce to go there. Um, so my wife was scared. Shit. Well, she was very scared. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, commerce who? Uh, you know, um, so yeah, that, that was, you know, and I have three kids, you know, and a wife and, and uh, you know, so, so leaving a, you know, a, you know, Salesforce to go for this uh, German, ba it's a German company, you know, it's a German startup essentially that, uh, um, you know, had three employees in the U.S. and an insurance plan that was, you know, not the best, <laughs> you know, you know, for your family. So, uh, but, you know, she was supportive, you know, she thought, you know, of me and, and you know, so I, you know, I thought it was a the right move for me. I, I had worked with the chief product officer at Oracle, so I, I, okay. I, had, some, I had some background, so Context, I knew, and, yeah. yeah, and, uh, you know, I knew that uh, if he was associated with it and, and left Oracle to go do this, and, it, and the product must be sound, you know, so. Uh, and, and what was it like going from a, a big brand to kind of probably an unknown or probably not well-known brand? I mean, you know, I had done it before, you know, before I was at Oracle for a long time in Salesforce, but in my past, I, you know, I've started a couple of businesses of my own and, and I did, did some smaller ones, entrepreneurial things. So I, I, I kind of knew what I was getting into. Um, you know, I think, I think there's people, I think you, when you work at Salesforce and Oracle, everybody thinks, well, it's very easy to get meetings, very easy to get things of who you are, but it, it's, it, it's not. I mean, it, you know, it, it's, uh, you can certainly get meetings easier maybe, but oh. I don't believe that you, you, you still have to go through the sales process, still has to be a need, you still have to be able to, yeah. So, it, you know, it's, it's, so it's the same process. Um, it, the key for me was is really, if you look at, you know, kind of how, it's the same way you would do at Oracle or Salesforce when you had your territory and how you, where am I going to start, right? You know, it's like, you know, where you have this huge territory. Well, now at Salesforce, you got maybe two accounts, but at the time when I was there, you had about, you had 14 or 15 or maybe, you know, 16 accounts and the same, same at Oracle. So I always, the first thing you do is, you know, where do I start with these accounts? You know, and trying to figure out who your ideal customer is, what they look like, what am I looking for, what characteristics. And in this case, so it's very, it's the same process. You know, it's just, I have the whole country now, right? <laughs> and, and you have, you know, 500 accounts. You know, if you look at, you know, even if you just looked at the Fortune 500, in our case, it was the internet retailer 500, you know, in a mix of both. So you probably started with around 500 accounts. And then how do I you know, take that down to a, a something I can actually manage and how do I start identifying where to start, you know, cause that was the, I figured I could waste a lot of time, you know, in the yes. wrong accounts. Yeah. And, and then get nowhere. Um, so the first year was really about that is really identifying who's our ideal customer. I mean, who, who are we going after? Um, we could tell pretty quick, you know, and most startups kind of go with the, the smaller, you know, smaller, you start with SMB or mid market and then you can move your way into enterprise problem. I guess, I guess a good and bad with our product is, is, is small businesses or SMB and, and mid market wouldn't use our product. It's just too okay. complex, you know, so you had no choice, but to start with enterprise. So that, that in itself made it difficult, you know, to get your first few deals, but we, we were able, we had a pretty, uh, you know, the, the day I started, you know, the, the woman that runs marketing started and she, um, and she's a you know, greater job and we had a good relationship. We were able to really build out, you know, who are we going to go after? Who's our, what does our ideal customer look like? We were able to really narrow it down to about, you know, 150 accounts, you know, based on the characteristics we have identified that make them, you know, uh, an ideal customer, right? And even to the point where we can, what is our ideal sponsor going to look like, um, you know, within that account, you know, so we, then we were able to very, you know, kind of surgically target it. So I interviewed with a guy once and he kind of always said, uh, um, aim, aim small, miss small. You know, it was his, you know, that from the, I think that was from the Patriot, I think, you know, <laughs> with Mel Gibson. Um, you know, um, but, but it makes sense, right? I mean, so what we're, what we're trying to do is really, let's, let's, I think you hear the whole idea of, uh, of, of 
find out who's in market right now to buy, yep. right? The whole ABX thing that you, that's kind of, I think, I don't know if it's, you know, kind of taking hold of the old ABM you know, model. And I, I think that was the key is like, we can identify all these accounts, but if you look at commerce, they only replatform some every, every, every five years. And some companies have been on the same one since, you know, yeah, you know, you, I, you were at IBM, I think at one point, or IBM Webster was built in the 90s, right? And ATG and Oracle built in the 90s, you know, um, Hybris built in the late 90s, early 2000s. So 20 years, some of these folks have been on the same platform. So not only do you have to identify the right ones, but they also have to be in market to actually move off that platform at some point. Right. It has you to know, be some so, pain. Yeah. yeah. And um, what we identified was, is, is in Oracle's case, there's a platform, their, their platform is an ATG. Um, and they had essentially stopped support, you know, for it. And we're trying to move all their customers to their cloud version, which was essentially a replatform. So that was kind of our opportunity to really focus on those accounts. Um, cause we knew that they had to do something, they had to do something very soon. Uh, so we had a pretty good, you know, sense of our ideal customer. Then, then we add that into it. You add in a few other characteristics, you know, how modern are they? We have a very modern platform. So if they're not digitally mature enough for it, you know, it's going to be a two year sales cycle, right? And educating them all, you know, so you really had to find the ones that were already there and you know, already bought off on this new architecture and then kind of start there. So we were able to really start small like that and this small. And we, we got, you know, whether it was luck or a little bit of strategy, you know, we, we started winning a couple of these ATG, you know, takeaways and we got a large deal down in South America with one of their largest customers and then another large retailer here in the U S and then, you know, another large retailer and then just kind of, took off from there. Yeah. And how long did it take to get your, you know, your feet underneath you where you felt at home again? Jeez, I don't know if I still next do. year. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, you know, you, you always think like, okay, if I get this one big customer, it's going to get easy. You know, it, you know, if we at and is a customer, right? We got at uh, Okay. Now it's going to get real easy. You know, um, it, it, and to a sense, it, it, a certain extent it did because um, once you can do something, someone that big, the whole question of, hey, are, are, can a small company handle us because we're so, we're this large enterprise, that question goes away. And that was always a big question, you know, hey, you're this small company. I mean, our biggest competitors right now are Salesforce, Oracle, and SAP, you know, yep. the three largest software companies in the world, right? Um, and we're this little, you know, German company. That built really good technology, but you know, you still had to gain the trust of, of the customer to be able to say, hey, I'm going to move off a billion dollars in revenue uh, on our online store to this little German company that is going to run it in GCP or AWS and hopefully keep it up and running and, and, and make sure it doesn't, you know, fall over, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, so that, that's, a, that was the difficult part. Um, but, you know, it, it just goes, a lot of stuff you talk about, I mean, I, mean, I, I uh, I'm still kind of, Maybe I'm older because I'm old school, you know, in a sense. But you know, but uh, I do believe, you know, for for winning these types of deals, this one, they have to trust you. I mean, and, and you have to kind of build credit trust, you know, over time, you know. So I was very good about, and our team is very good about doing, you know, whatever. If we say we're going to have something in 24 hours, do it in 24 hours. If, you, if we say if we say we can do this, then we do it. If we say we can't do this, you know, we can't. So really being transparent with the customer, and first of all, where the technology is, where the gaps are, what we do, what we don't do well. Uh, but then also every, every step of the way, making sure that we, we said what we were going to do, because I, I kind of believe you, that's how you build the trust. It's over time. You can't. Yeah. And then by the time it's ready to sign this contract, they, they trust that, Hey, these guys are going to make sure we get, we, we get live and that we're successful, you know, but the only way to do that is not, is, is, is not make them, you know, make missing those parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and if you do make a mistake, you know, you'll be accountable for it and then fix it. Right. Cause I mean, I make, you make mistakes every day. Right. You know, and, and it, some are bigger than others. Right. But, you know, you know, being accountable for it, you, you can turn that around. I mean, it's going to happen. And that, that's how you have to build a relationship because I mean, the customer makes mistakes too. You know, they make mistakes going up for funding to make mistakes going building their business case and make mistakes, not understanding other vendors, you know, things like that, you know, so. And how did, is it a line of business sale or is it a technology sale? That's the hard part. It's both. It's um, both. It's both. But where um, do you start? Do you start line of business or do you start technology? We, that was always our, the problem is, is, is as much as we like to sell to the, I mean, everybody wants to sell the business, right? I mean, but ours is a tech focused product. It's, it's, we have a better, we have the best architecture. We have the least amount of features, you know, and it's not as pretty looking as Salesforce or as Oracle or as SAP, the, the user interface, right? The, the business tooling. So all the things that the business people, Care you know, sexy. Yeah. You know, to them, we don't have, you know, so, so um, you know, so we start 
on the tech side, because usually the, the, the architecture team or the, 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 chief, the, the CTO, the CIO, they, they end up, you know, kind of buying off on it. Then we, we eventually, then we have to move in and, and sell the business. And for our, for us, you know, we don't have to be the, have the business say, hey, this is the best solution, but we have to at least be neutral on the business side where they say, hey, you know, it meets our needs, meets our requirements, we can do that. But having the better architecture, you know, is more valuable if, if you think about, you know, how important commerce is and, and you can't have downtime, you can't have, you have to have flexibility. Think about COVID. I mean, look at companies like Best Buy within two weeks after COVID, they had, you know, click and collect, you know, curbside pickup up and going. You know, you can't do that unless you have a flexible architecture, you know, because you don't know what, now it's even more clear. You don't know what's coming. You know, all you do, all you know, is you got to be able to move fast, you know, so we can sell that, but, but we've done a pretty good job at taking, you know, how does this technology advantage we have help you move faster as a business, right? So we, we have those conversations on the business side is, you know, what does my, like microservices mean to you as a business person? You know, how does that make you move faster? If you want new capabilities, instead of waiting three, you know, three months or six months for it, you can get them in two weeks. You know, and if that's a revenue generating item, you know, then you get revenue four months faster than you would with a, with a typical platform. You know, so things like that, yeah, we, we do. And I, I got to believe that until you get the deal, you get the PO, you get it started, you get your, these competitors who have relationships with the executives are going for you. How, how do you defend against that? Do it every time. I mean, SAP and Salesforce will bring in the executive team and 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 and, and meet with the CIO and the C, you know, and the uh, the business folks, you know, the enterprise, you know, on the uh, business side. I, you know, I think yeah, I think to do this job, you gotta have a little bit of a a, a chip on your shoulder, you know, because you're you're going to get these big, you know, it's David versus Goliath, right? I mean, so yep. you have to kind of relish that. You have to like that. I mean, I I would, you know. It's, it, I don't want to have to bring my president in. I don't want to have to bring in our chief product officer, you know, cause I, you know, the, cause in my mind and say, I think everybody kind of said, okay, bring in some high level person. They're going to all of a sudden change the, change the course of the deal. I haven't seen that happen too many times, you know, so, you know, you know, and, and they can slow it down and they can create something, you know, you know, and they, and they might be able to push something through as part of an ELA and throw something in for free. And, and that, right. that's the way you get, you might get hurt, but if you've done everything right, you know, in the sales cycle, in the, in the previous, whatever, eight, nine months, you know, you, you can typically get past that, but it does happen every time. But I, I hire salespeople now that, that have a little bit of chip on their shoulder that, that want to go up against that, that want to go up because, you know, our competitors will bring in 12 different people, 12 people right. to support account. We have two or three. The, the school bus selling, right? <laughs> yeah. And, but see, so you got to, I mean, then when you do beat them, it, it, it feels that much better. You know, it, it, there's like, you, you know, cause you went ahead against, you know, you, we have less resources, less money, less everything. You know, but we have a very good sales team and we have a good product, you know, yeah. um, and, and that's, and that's how we win. But where'd that chip come from? I don't know. I think you're born with that. You know, you think? I, I think, oh, yeah, come, yeah, on. I come on, yeah. something happened. <laughs> uh, I, I grew up in Indiana in a small town, you know, so, um, yeah. you know, and, and, you know, I live in Chicago in a big city. So I think you always kind of, when you're from a small town, you always have that. I think, uh, cause especially, in my, you know, let's face it, Indiana is a flyover state for most people. You know, I loved growing up there, but, uh, you know, but you do get, you know, so coming in and, you, and you're always kind of fighting, you know, so, um, and I think you've learned, I think you just grow as a, as a person, as a salesperson, you know, you know, over time. Right. And, and you become, that stuff becomes less, you know, a motivator, um, and, and just part of kind of how you sell, you know? Yeah. So what does motivate you? Is it, is it the winning? Uh, I, you know, the challenge, I took it for the challenge. I, so I, I remember having my, my, my boss at sales, my manager at Salesforce, you know, kind of sat me down and said, well, you know, why are you leaving? You know? And, and I said, I, I remember just saying, you know, I, I think I can do more, you know, like I, and I want to do more, you know, and I could see that I could stay there for 10, yeah. 15 years and, and do, do very well and move up and, and, you know, and probably, you know, it'd be a lot safer, more secure. And, and, you know, but I just, I just always had this sense, listen, I want to do more. And I, and I had done more in my own businesses. So I, I just had this, you know, I, I, I wanted to, I wanted the challenge, you know, and, and I wanted to build stuff. I like building stuff a lot. Okay. And, uh, and so, and it's the same as like, if you have a rep in a new territory, you're building the territory, you know, you're building the region, you're building, you're building, it's just a, it's just a larger scale. You do the exact same things, you know, it's, it's, it's the same process. It's just a different scale. Um, so I knew I could do it, you know, I just wanted the opportunity and I knew it was going to be a risk, you know, to take it. Um, and luckily my wife was, 
was uh, was okay with it. The first couple of years were rough. I mean, the first year was real rough. I mean, this probably one of the many times I sat in my bed going, "What the hell did I do this for?" You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, I think I could be, you know, um, you know, because you bang your head. But if you get the right team, you know, around you, I mean, because you can't do it yourself. I mean, it, 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 no matter how how smart you think you are, I think I am, or you, you know, you, you can't. You need a strong marketing team, partner team. You need a strong, you know, SE team. You need the whole team's got to work well together because they're. And you got to support one another because there's good, like you said, when those bad days, you know, everybody has them. You need somebody to, to, to lift you back up, you know, and, uh, and support perfect. you. Yeah, because you were kind of in the perfect storm. High end sale, uh, no install base, long sales cycle, hyper competitive. So, you, you know, the company's also wondering, is Brad the right guy? I probably until, still you say that. <laughs> until you close, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think they ever stopped saying that. Um, you know, <laughs> well, we, yeah, we got bought by a private equity company last year. So now it's a whole new ball game, right? With it, yeah. you know, so, um, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it, they always want, I had a, we had a great, uh, I reported into the kind of the chief strategy officer out of Germany and uh, just a great guy and a person. Um, it, 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 you know, when salespeople are good salespeople, right? I mean, and you know, when salespeople uh, are doing all the right things, you know, and, and, and you can, you can see if you, if you can recognize that, right. And some sales, sales leaders can, some can't. Right. And I think he was good in that sense. He, he, he knew he's actually came from IBM. The guy was a physicist and he, he was in sales, you know, within his sales. So just a different kind of guy, but he also provided a lot of support for the hard times in a sense that he, he knew I was doing all the right things. He knew we were, you know, we were, uh, adapting our strategy we had a good we had a sound strategy you know we made little iterations on it based on what happened on the ground but for the most part we stuck with the strategy that we came up with in the beginning and there were times that you know some other folks in the company wanted to change the strategy you know here in the u.s and we and he luckily still stuck behind me because i thought i just, I just said I, I think this is going to work you know and, and i you hadn't seen anything yet but you know i, I in sales you kind of your gut you, you got to listen to your gut i just knew things were about to happen you know, and you, and you can start hearing the conversations with the customer. I could see the market was moving towards us. You know, the, the technology was moving towards us. Um, and everything was kind of lining up. It just hadn't happened yet. I mean, so that first year, the second year got, you know, got a lot better. We got three or four large customers and the third year was great. And then this, you know, yeah, so. And that's it because a lot of non-sales people, when they say they know what a good salesperson is, they, they think know. it's the, the, the loud talking, suit wearing, yeah. glad handing. And that doesn't work in this type of sale. It, it, and that, and, it, and it, it's almost offensive because I'm not, you know, because I'm probably more of an introvert in general, you know, uh, as a person. And so I, I don't fit that at all, you know. So, um, but, but that's how people view it. But it's like, I don't really know hockey very well. You know, it's one of the sports I just don't, but I, I know, like, I know Wayne Gretzky's great, but I couldn't watch the game and tell you why he's great. You know, oh, he did this. He made, he, he made this pass. Because I, I don't know enough about hockey to know how, you know, so that, that's my view, and, and when you get a lot, some leaders that just they don't kind of, you might do something brilliant, you, you know, but you no know, one, if you don't know that what you're looking for, you don't see it, right? You know, so but if but if you know how to sell, and you see some, you know, a strategy or an approach or or or, or the message you're doing within an account or you know, or in a meeting or you know how you identify the right person, it, it, you can see the genius in people, right? It, right. If you, you you know so and and that's that's what. Uh, What's what's great for me now in a leadership role is, is is really just you know I know what I'm looking for you know in a salesperson I know I know what they need to be able to do to be successful in, in this job at this time at this moment not not any other job I, I can tell you but for the, doing this job you know there's I can honestly say that there's nobody knows how to sell this better than I do right now yeah. th th this company you know this moment you know this product right and I so I know I know what it takes you know for these people to, you know to be successful in it so I know what to look for you know so and I think that's a, a key point because too many people just hire people who look like themselves or act like themselves. Yeah. We got a lot of different, uh, I mean, I, I, we hired different, all different backgrounds and some without even any experience in commerce, you know, cause it, I mean, to me, our, we're selling a platform, you know, it, it just happens to do commerce. You know, if you know how to sell a platform, you can sell this. I, I didn't, I never did commerce for my life till I came here, you know? So, you know, it, it, it so it's, you don't need the, the, the school of thought, commerce is like a, is a pretty tight industry. You know, it's a, everybody's been there for 20 years, 30 years. And, and, and so I, when I came in, I was like, well, we, we don't really need to sell it like a commerce. Well, first of all, we don't have any features. We, we don't have, we have the least amount of features. So we, we can't sell that, you know, so we got to sell the, the, the architecture, which is just straight selling a platform, you know, so that's what we did. So, so if you can sell a platform, you can do this, you know, um, 
and again, th th those are the key things. I, I look for the chip on their shoulder. You know, the people don't give up. They, they don't. They don't back down. They don't give up. They keep. They keep fighting. And they keep. They keep moving forward. Um, and then they have to be able to, uh, you know, create trust. They have to have integrity as people. And, and then, and then the key one I think is the most important is being creative. Um, every one of these deals is different. Every use case is different. Every every way we structure a deal is different, and and, and the creativity is, is the single most important one. And, and, and the one the reps that have the creativity, you know, and, and can see that and see the deal, see see the see how we're going to solve this problem. I mean, you have three people in the same account, and two of them walk out and say, "There's no deal here," but the one sees it, you know, and sees the deal. It, it may be six moves away, or six plays away, or six or, or a year away, but they see it because they have that creative, you know, that side, which I think. And it, when you're in this business, that, I mean, it, what I'm selling right now, that, that was, that's the key thing I look for is the creativity. Yeah. And how do you s identify that? Are you looking for past history? Are you giving them a case study? Are you talking through scenarios and deals, you know, they've done in the past and then why they did certain things, you know, uh, you know, what did your competitor do? And then how did you respond to that? Well, and then they explain something. So why'd you do that? Asking why, like, why, why'd you do that? Or yeah. why didn't you do that? You know, and, and just seeing how they think. And then you kind of you, you can kind of see how they, they how they uh, they strategize on the deal and, and what they're where they're trying to get to. You know, um, I think that's the key is asking why. I mean, everybody asks the same interview questions. I think in sales, you've been in through most, but you really just uh, the the why is what you know, when you talk through deals and you and you really understand you know why they did things, you can start seeing that. I think. Um, yeah. and, and, and have you seen patterns in like these large deals? Patterns in what way? Patterns like, okay, you get like the technical win. And I, we yep. talked about one where the competitor end runs to the executive team. The patterns for us are, I mean, we, we look for complexity. We, we can handle things that other platforms can't. But the problem is you've got to find it. So you got to get into the account and you got to be able to find where the complexity is. Yeah. Where's, where, where's the one use case that no other platform can do but ours? And, and yeah. so find, finding that is the hard part. Yeah. But the other key thing is you got to find the right sponsor with our, because I mean, if he's going to go say, I'm going to move a billion and a half or $2 billion of our revenue to this little platform. This guy's got to one, he, he's got to have the ability to do that. He's got to also be willing to put his neck you know, on the line to do that. And he's got to be able to influence everybody else within, within the, uh, the account. Um, and he's really got to be a visionary. He's got to be somebody who wants to, to make change. I mean, yeah. most of our customers, most of our deals are one in accounts that are, going through some sort of digital transformation. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and if they're, and they haven't done that yet, they're not ready for us, you know? Um, and, and so, but when you find the ones that are and you find the right sponsor within there, then you find the right use case, you know, we don't lose very often if you do those three things. Now, now if those three things aren't there and that's only probably 30% of the accounts, you know, but, if you, but early on, that's all I needed, you know, to make the numbers, you know, I didn't have to go after the whole pie. I just had to find that 30% that were already there, go after those and, we won 80% of those deals. So we have an 80% win weight. If you find those, uh, all the characteristics that we have, we, we win 80% of those, you know, so. That's it, you find that, what you call a sponsor, champion, whatever you want to call it. If they have that credibility, you have a lockout, something you do, no one else does, they appreciate it. And that person has a personal win yep. to get it done. Most of the ones that, that, that have, implemented us and, and gone online to do it and it's been successful, which, you know, all of our customers in the U S right now are, are, are referenceable and, and they have been, have moved up in the organization because of it and, and are now, you know, so, um, but you know, what if it would have failed, they would have been fired probably, you know, right. so, so they have to be willing to do that, you know, and, and there's not many people that are willing to make a decision that may the cost in their job, you know, uh, and that kind of becomes an asset test because they have to have that internal credibility. Yeah. And it's always, it's never, it's not the people you think it might be. I mean, it, it's the person that it's you not the when, CIO. Yeah. <laughs> you, when you're in a meeting, it, you can usually tell in the first meeting is yep. when you have 10 people in the room and, and who does everybody listen to when that guy talks, oh. that person talks, you yeah. know, and, 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 and it could be an architect. It could yep. be a business guy. It could be, you know, so it, it, it could be anyone, but it, it, that's what I'm always looking for is who's everybody listening to when they talk. Because some people yeah. talk, you, you can tell no one's listening to them. You know? um, yeah. But then one, the one person says something and then everybody's like, oh, and he's like, okay, that's my guy. That's my person right there. You know? I, I, I noticed it almost, I'd say 80% of the time. They usually weren't in the meeting at the beginning. Yeah. 
because they knew the beginning was about the building and who went to what school and how much funding you have. They'd come in probably at least 10 minutes into it, sometimes a half hour into it. But as soon as they came into that room, everyone turned around and the, the tone changed in the room. Yep. In the last 10, 15 minutes, they'd ask the toughest questions. That's the, that's the, I was about to say, they, they ask the right question. And the ones that they figure out right away where the gaps are, they figure yep. out right away where the problems might be with, with, within 20 minutes of, of, of hearing about what we do, you know? Yeah. And those, but that's good because they're smart, they're smart, you know, they get it. That, that, that's the key though. I found, I mean, the more they know about your tech, the gaps in your technology, I mean, it, it's not, you're not going to lose the business because you have gaps and everybody does, you know, right. but as long as they can get in front of them, we can have a solution for how they're going to be able to, to work around that or, or to extend that or, or whatever the answer is, right? But then you can work through it. But if, if you don't get that out early, you know, then it comes up late in the sales cycle because you, you're trying to keep something from the customer. It, 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 that's where you lose business. You know, you lose the trust, you, you, you lose the momentum that's going in the account. The momentum to me is the key. Is this yes. once you get that momentum going, you you got a strike. I mean, you can't. You know, it, it's like once you feel that, then, then you just that's that's hundred percent focus now. This account, right? You right. Know, so. Yeah, because it's really hard to create, and once you lose it, it's hard to restore. And it's fun. I mean, that's yeah. that's the that's the joy you get in sales, right? I mean, it's like that's probably my thinking about when you asked me earlier about my motivator. I mean. It, it, I, I just want to enjoy. I, I love it. I mean, I love the, being a deal strategizing, you know, working through the, you know, against our competition, you know, trying to figure out what, you know, it's just that, that part is just fun for me. I mean, uh, and I, I think I don't think I'll ever want to be above where I'm still working in accounts, you know, um, you know, at a first line, you know, kind of manager, you know, because I working the actual strategy in, in the deals is, is my favorite part of the job. Yeah. Um, and that may change, you know, over time, but, but they, that, that's where I get the enjoyment, the excitement, and, and, you know. So is it more motivated by winning or not losing? I don't, I don't even ever think I'm gonna, I don't even think about losing. I mean, I, I think it's, I always think I'm gonna win. Uh, and, and, it, and I'm never surprised. I mean, if I, if I can see pretty early that we're not gonna win, then we move on. You know, you, you can tell, I mean, right. I, and, and that's the key. So, um, it, you know, it's not win because one win is never enough. Like you win the deal, you think you're going to be, oh, I'm going to be happy. This is going to be great. You know, I'm going to win this one deal. And then it's like, okay, you, you, you win. Now it's the next one. And it's the next one. You know, it, I don't think you ever appreciate to you. Like, I don't appreciate what I did here and try to look back and say, oh, from year one to now. And then you see all the, cause it's because it's incremental, like, you know, wins, you know, and then eventually it piles up to enough. And you're like, wait a second, I, I just built something pretty good here. You know, um, and I didn't notice it while I was doing it because it was just, on to the next deal, on to the next deal, on to the next one, hiring more people, doing this, really, you know. So you just don't have time to ever sit back and, and, and I think you have to do that and sit back because because there's bad times too. And you, but, <laughs> yeah, kind you know, of. So, it, it's easy to reflect on those, you know, it's like yeah. those way on you, you, those are the nights where you don't sleep, right? But you, you, you got to give your, yourself the time to, uh, to appreciate kind of what you've done and what you built and, 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 and you know, congratulate yourself, whatever, whatever that means. Um, I mean, I'm one quick, I met a guy when I start, first started at Salesforce and he was at Oracle the year before and he was telling me I was about ready to get fired, you know, um, hadn't sold anything, you know, just down, just, you could see in his face. And, this, and, he, and then he, at Salesforce, 12 months later, he's the number one rep at sales, you know, there. And uh, I think he did this huge deal at Granger or somewhere. And, um, and I could see in his face, you know, you know, now he's, he's like, but he was almost in tears talking about how he felt then and now because you're so sometimes in sales you can get so focused on you know my value is only when i'm winning you know and then when i'm not here but he's the same guy he was 12 months ago probably right you know maybe he made some changes but i think he kind of kind of took from that you know you can't get too high once you on your wins but you can't get too low when you have a bad year because they're going to happen you can do all the right things not have a great year you know And, and and then just start letting that define who you you know your value based on what i'm actually bring it in at this moment in time, you know? And I think that's even more of a leadership issue because if you have a great rep who's having a bad quarter or a bad half or a bad year, you don't want to lose them. You don't want them to experience that doubt. You want to b- build them back up because you know they have the Granger type deal in them. Yeah. You can't, I mean, I, I'm, I'm biggest proponent of, you can't motivate with fear. 
I mean, because once it's one else, no. That, once once the, once your reps get are fearful, they they do stupid things, and, and they you know and they they're not they're not in a uh, in a uh, a feeling of you know creation. I mean, abundance. You, you want the abundance abundant. and create and create. You want them creating. You know what you know. So if if you're in fear, you can't create. Yeah. You can't go out and do stuff. So you know we see the managers do that. I'm just like you're hurting yourself by doing that. Right. You're, I mean, you're not and you're hurting the rep and you're hurting yourself. You know you know. Bring it, figure out a way to keep them, you know, open-minded, creative, and out there, you know, positive, and, and out there, yeah. you know, doing what they do. You know, that, that's the way. That's in my mind the only way you can. Otherwise, I mean, you're, you're essentially helping them out the door. You, you know, you are. Yeah. Right, and they're not going to be honest with you. And you got to look back at your career. When were you on fire? You know, the, 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 kind of one of the best years I had. I made my number in June on a fiscal calendar year. So for six months, I was in accelerators. I was just unstoppable, <laughs> right? But then I've been in jobs where you go in and you have no pipeline, yeah. you know, no help, right. no marketing. And they're, they're like, oh, is Brian the right guy? And you're like, am I the right guy? <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> have, I, is, have I all of a sudden changed? You know, I'm not very right? good anymore. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was working hard. What did I do last night? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it, they it, pull the carpet underneath you and you're like, no, I, I think because let's face it. People go into sales for upside. They don't go there to prevent downside. No, I mean, and that's and that's what and that's a good thing though. You know, it, it is a good. Thing. That's why they go in. That's why they go in for it. You know, and, yeah. and that's why I like some of the other stuff that you, everything you post. You know, because it's like that's the important stuff. You know, and they're focus, and Everybody focuses on the wrong things. Yes. You know, and uh, and hopefully that this whole you know sales operations you know you know way of you know uh, of selling or managing sales maybe will kind of you know bounce back to more of a middle approach where, you know, it, 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 at some point, cause I did, you know, it, I don't believe it works, but I mean, I, I guess I, I don't have as much data as they do, I guess, you know, it's like well, I mean, it works in yeah, the tornado yeah. Yeah. You know, when there's demand, when you're really fulfilling demand as opposed to creating demand. Yes. Very Good different point. world. Yeah. 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 Cool. So then it's a matter of, it's almost like selling widgets. You get the right, you know, it, yeah. It, yeah. 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 So, Hey, I appreciate your time today, Brad. Yeah, I'm can... over. I apologize. Yeah, um, but hey, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it, Brian. You know, it's uh, I love your stuff. Uh, you know, I think you you make them funny, but the points that you get across are, are important. You know, so I, I appreciate it, and uh, and I send them to all the Europeans that I work with. You know, they, you know so now they all follow you too. You know, think you know this American or hate me, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, depending on who you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>